air exit. Uh, lifts must not be used, but we're on the ground floor, so let's ignore that one. Congregate on the green outside the guild hall reception. I'm going to remind you that mobile devices should be turned to silent or off in the meeting. And this afternoon, we're welcoming um, Rondo Roberts to chair the meeting for the first time this afternoon. Martin King is not able to make it this afternoon. So um, we're going to be very gentle on Rondo this afternoon and help him through the meeting. Okay. Uh, so, question is there any policies for absence of anybody? Uh, Barry Walton. Barry Walton. Okay. I'm William Bolton. William Bolton. Uh, confirmation of the minutes? I'll move. Yeah, it's moved that, uh, to accept the minutes. Is that okay? Second it, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, excuse me. Is there any declaration of personal interest? Yes, yeah, so the renovation agenda item. I, I'll just read out the paragraph for you all, that's okay. All members should regard themselves as having a personal and prejudicial interest in respect of agenda items 7 and 8, which deal with member allowance and the cost of care. However, members can rely on the exemption afforded by paragraph 12.2b.4 of the Member Code of Conduct which states that members will not be regarded as having a prejudicial interest in any business where that business relates to the function of the authority in respect of an allowance or payment made in accordance with the provisions of Part 8 of the Local Government Wales Measure 2011 or an allowance or pension provided under Section 18 of the Local Government and Housing Act 1989. Uh, item five now, please. Uh, member development. I'd like to hand it over to uh, to Linda Roberts, please. Yeah, Louise. Louise, sorry, Louise sorry. Davis. Okay. Louise <laughs> Davis. Sorry. So, member development meeting. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. Right hand. Yeah. Member development meetings. Um, this was just a verbal update because I haven't actually received any requests for any one-to-one -one development discussions from from members. Um, and I haven't received any of the PDR forms, which are at the back of the PDR form. I think we agreed that uh, that if any identified any development needs, that you you complete this template and perhaps email it to me, or email me some requests. I have received requests by email um, from from certain um, members, but I haven't actually had any requests for one-to-one -one meetings, but I'm, I'm assuming that they're going on with group leaders. Okay, and the next item is member development uh, yearly report. I'm oh, sorry, Dana? Oh, can I just make a comment on agenda item five, please? Where we've got the table of member development, would it not be useful to identify the training as new training, refresher training, and training specifically for the role? Because we've got training here, for example, scrutiny chairing, and it's really aimed at our chairs and vice chairs, but obviously all members can attend. Preparing for Brexit was a new um, training session, and where there's code of conduct could be refresher training. And I just think that would make it more transparent. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. You could colour code it. Fabulous. Make it look even prettier. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so sorry, moving on to then the member development mid year report. Um, item number five, I suppose, yes. So sorry. Yeah. The, 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 the mid year report includes the appendices, which is the actual attendance to date. It also includes that um, since the last meeting of this group that we've been sending out calendar appointments for training opportunities. And hopefully that is working well. It is from our point of view. Um, I suppose it's just, has that improved, has that improved the, the service for you? 
question. Mary Kelly? Yeah, I think it's only a personal opinion, but I think there is dupl unnecessary duplication in the appointment procedure or diary procedure at the moment because you get one from uh, committees and then you get another one, you get a second request to attend. So we're double booking in our work, in our diaries at the moment. And I brought it up with chairs and vice chairs last meeting and it, it appears that it, they're two separate bodies so they can't sort of work together to ensure that you, because if you look in your diary, if you get a request and you look in your diary, a lot of it is already in, so you may say you can't go because you've got something else in to your diary, I don't know if, if you can understand what I'm trying to say. But nearly all appointments are appearing twice now. Um, and so if, I don't know which two bodies are responsible, but if they could get together and just send one, one appointment out, it would be much easier. And I think that also, um, you, uh, of members still aren't pressing accept because more members are turning up for meetings than have pressed accept on the button and the idea was was to get an idea of how many people are actually going to be in attendance but I still think hopefully when we come on to talk about the uh, iPad training for the meeting we had on Monday then maybe I can uh, explain what I mean during that session. Okay. now is that workforce development receive the dates from committee services so committee services have the dates in their diary for member development and then what we're doing in workforce development are filling those dates with topics so you may have had the date in from committee services to be a member development session and I suppose you're getting the duplication from us saying this member development session is scrutiny skills so is that okay. If you look on the 9th of December, there's two meetings down here at 10 o'clock, member development. Okay. And I just, I don't see, I can't see why someone can't work together just so we only have one appointment in the day. Yeah, I agree with Derek. I was wondering, since if there's something in our diaries we can go in and edit it, could you, could the system give you the powers to edit what has been set up so that you don't have to set up a fresh one somewhere in my own time? You don't have to set up a fresh one, but you can edit that one. Because occasionally, I, look, I think my day is going to melt when I suddenly see that everything's, and then I realize it's duplicated, so I'm not quite so panic stricken. But it, perhaps you can edit them. It's been one council and everything. I'll look at that. Great. Thank you. I think it's to do with, um, our iPads because we um, we can list everything that we need in the private and we can do it as well for the personal. And my understanding, if you've ticked everything in private and done it in in you know in personal, then you will get two invites because it's run from that system. So I don't know whether it's as simple as just get one invite and not getting the duplicated invite because I think it's it's that way. Maybe Sarah's got a bit more information along that. Um, but I'd rather get an invite, whether it's duplicated or not. <laughs> I think that's the most important, isn't it? I think the um, committee section, they put them in first because they're in effect setting them for the year in advance to keep them free from your calendars. And it's not known initially what the topic is going to be. So they appear first um, to keep that slot. You know, there is going to be some training on and then when um, workforce development set their program. They're sending out the individual appointments because they want their members to respond to those individual appointments about are you coming to that training? Yeah, and it's those individual appointments that are duplicated, and I think that link then is back to whether you're linked up on personal and private in your iPad, then you will get two invites. That's my understanding. So, uh, sorry, I don't want to prolong this because it, to me it seems an admin thing that ought to be fixable, but there was a meeting on Tuesday afternoon, and I think that was a duplicated one, but only one of them was cancelled. So, I, and, and Dana, you've now frightened me by talking about <laughs> the private section of it and the other, so 
I mean, I, I was going to introduce the stage. I decided that's actually my level. See, you're about to make a flight. If I have a chat with um, committee services and we'll sort out the calendar, so I'd say it's an administration issue, isn't it? Yes. Councillor Pritchard. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, can I just touch on the members' development and the training? Uh, I'd like to thank the officers for all their hard work and effort they put into this. Feedback that I've had as group leader for my group this has been beneficial and very positive. So a big thank you from me um, for doing that. But what I would like to remind everybody that we, as an authority council, can put training courses on and members' development on. It's you as members who need to attend take the opportunity to embrace it and um, always improve yourself, yourselves as elected members. So putting that aside, comfortable with that, but I would have hoped and I would have liked there would have been more members attending this afternoon. That's just my comment. I don't know what other people think, but I just think we should embrace it. Coming back to the training, and I, I, this is why I've come along today, really to take the opportunity to once again voice that song how I feel this council should go with regards to training and improving the chair, the chairmanship of meetings. I believe that this council, before you sit on a chair, should have training. I, I, I do, do believe that. I've said that in the past, and I'll say it in the future. Um, and I'll give you an example. If you sit on planning, you have to go on training. If you sit on licensing, you have to go on training. I would plead with this um, committee today to look at this in the future to work forward to bring in members' development on chairing meetings. I would go as far to say, if you don't go on the training, you shouldn't sit as a chair. That's just me as an individual. But again, if you could please look at it and consider it going into the future. Thank you, Chair. Hello. Thanks, um, Jill. Mark, I, I think when we first started, we could go and compare the council together. We did have in the beginning because I remember going about chairing uh, meetings. But I would actually back Mark up totally on that, but I would also, I don't know if we, it's possible if we are going to put training on, I would also ask, does anybody from the community councils want to attend that meeting or not? Because I, I feel it would be benefit for Wrexham area if community council is also at that training and to chair meetings, you know, because you know, so I, I totally back them up, but I'm sure when we first started, for the first few years, because I remember what was going on, we used to do it, but yeah, I would back him. But I, I would like to add that if the you know, community council would send anybody, we could actually embrace that as well. I, I totally agree. <laughs> We've got two plus upon me this afternoon. Um, yeah. That's a Dixon. Uh, thank you, Chair. So, yeah, I agree with, with Alan, but community councils, if their members have access to one voice wireless training, and we do use that as much as we can in Coit uh, some of the courses are, are particularly good. Uh, they've improved hugely, and, and, and that helps. But I think certainly with planning, uh, anything to help improve experience and knowledge with planning would, would, would help uh, not only the committee, but help wreck some uh, people in Monsman. Thank you. Um, yeah, I would just ask, because the training for chairs focuses on meeting etiquette, really, doesn't it? And how you take your amendments first and different things. I do think it would be beneficial if that was expanded out to include the work of the call over and um, to improve reports that are coming in front of committees. Um, because I think that then also helps officers. Because we've got to accept in this council there's been a huge change in officer roles and there's new officers coming into post. And I think that's an area there that can really be improved because then when scrutiny get the reports in front of them, it's got all the detail that they need to make the relevant recommendations and the informed decisions. Yeah, looking at the chart, just before item seven on this, it says that I haven't done the general chairs training but I have done the scrutiny chairs training. And I would just like to say that's probably about the fifth time I've done chair training in seven years. But that is not recorded on here anywhere. So if you look at that, you may think, oh, well, why hasn't Derek done it? He's a chair. But I, you know, 
I don't know how many times you need to do this. I, I learn something every time I've got training on it. I'm not saying that, but I just mean like something, something be shown in there that, you know, you've had the training or something and it's just a refresher for you. Because like I say, I'm, I'm sure I've been to at least five chairs training of some kind in the time I've been on the council. Thank you. I think if we do change the, the set out of this and put what's refresher training, it'll be a bit more obvious that some of them have done it in the past. I think also, I think the, the caveat that we've added, following, I think, um, your comment, um, Derek, is what we've, we've put at the top, follow it, the following information details the attendance who have access training opportunities via workforce development. This will only be a snapshot of the annual training. Um, some, and it, again, some of it, you may, this may be a repeat, it may be a refresher, and also formal training via their employer, personal reading, research, online modules. There's lots of other things going on as well. I think just to pick up your point, I think I've had some correspondence with um, Councillor Biffle as well this week around checking this, checking this um, appendices and his information was incorrect as well. I think our data entry, we send a um, participants list, a delegates list to every training session that we organise, some are done by internal officers, some are done by external commissioned officers. We don't always get the correct, somebody might have missed signing in, so we don't always get the correct information and we have missed that you've attended. So I think my suggestion by your email was that before this appendices is brought to this meeting and published, that I send it round to everybody individually so you can check yourself because you'll know if you, you were there. Um, and then we can correct our information via us. I think that's probably just a safety net, really, to make sure that the information is accurate. Uh, Beverly. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to go back, really, to um, Councillor Pritchard's comments about embracing um, member training, <coughs> and I fully do embrace it and, and support it. Um, however, um, I do feel that some of the member development sessions um, coincide with some members' working days. So I think we've discussed it previously, um, but I would ask if you know, you've got a training session starting at 10 o'clock in the morning, that you don't repeat it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but maybe the afternoon session could be pushed back to late afternoon or even early evening to give members then who do work the opportunity to come to a later session and to embrace that training because I do think it is important, it's vital to the role. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I fully agree with that. Thank you, Chair, for allowing me to come back. Thank you, Beverly, for that. And I think you're right, but we have taken that on board and we have started to roll it out. We're doing it in our workshops now and we have built up that commitment that we will do a late, I call it a late start. So, um, you know, I'm very relaxed on what time we want to uh, do it in the day, but I think. You know, after half past four, that probably is the right time for people who have got commitments to work. And we are doing that, we've done it with the workshops, and we will continue to do it through the budget process too. And we, we, we alternate it. But yeah, I can give you that commitment, that will be done. Because it's probably to me sitting here, I want people to embrace it, and then we don't put it on on the appropriate times. Thank you. Thank you. Should I at this time go through the meeting that we had earlier in the week because there's no other space on the agenda for yeah. the relief about iPad training. Yeah. Um, if you remember, those who were in attendance at the last Democratic Services Committee, it was suggested that uh, we look into training suitable for your level of iPad usage, really. So rather than a, a generic training, that we make a list of items, just say 20 or something, of things that you can do on the iPad and for people to tick boxes to say which ones they can and can't do. And then it was suggested that training would be, like for example, <coughs> if I could do 14 of the 20, then I'd get training on the last six. If I could do 10, then I'd get training on the last 10. It, because we, no one has any idea of people's skills. And if you've seen the emails of, of people going back and forward today, it, it appears that the conservative group don't want the training, or two of their members reckon they don't want the training, and the rest of us appear to want the training. So what it was suggested or agreed at the meeting or recommended, if you like, for us to recommend to this committee that each political group uh, put one member forward as their um, IT champion and then 
Uh, a meeting will be held of all five of them with IT, with Linda probably, to see what um, aspects of an iPad you need to learn, particularly to do your role as a counsellor, such as, you know, can you change the colour of the font on an iPad? I don't know. Can you uh, underline? Can you embold them? Can you do things like that? I don't know. But I'd like a list to be drawn up so I could find out where I'm, uh, my training uh, isn't good enough and to get the correct training. So that's what was agreed. But I don't know if the Conservative members on this panel agree with the two emails I got from their representatives that they didn't want to be involved in that because they've got sufficient knowledge now. I just, I just think personally, from my own point of view, whatever training is required regarding the use of iPads, I think it's taken up by the individual regardless of what group you're in. Yeah, but it was, it, it was thought that what we need to do is find out where the playing field is and where it's set now, because no one knows. Like I can sit by some people, uh, not looking at Alan in particular, <laughs> on the knowledge he's got on an iPad, and then I could sit by someone else such as Adrian from our group, and her just fingers, her fingers just whiz through everything. She's putting everything in folders and doing this and doing that. Well, that, that's the standard I would like to be, and I think the councillors who want to be should have be, be at that standard because of all the stick and the money that's been spent on these. I think we should get the maximum use that we can out of them. So therefore, that's why this was a suggestion that we would have five uh, reps, where it'd be one from each independent group, one from the Conservatives, one from Labour, and one for all of the others, played, non-aligned, and uh, liberals. So that was only the suggestion, but obviously if this committee disagree with that, then we don't need to go down that road. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, Debbie. Can I just say that? I'd like to train then, and I think I'd like to train as well. Train. So there's two from the social groups that definitely want to train it, because it's not like the normal iPad. Yeah. So it is, you know, it is different. And I don't know anything about this iPad, yeah. so I would appreciate the training. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Matt? Yes, thank you, Jeff. Can we just come back to, to Derek's comment on, on the loyalty champions? And that? That's fine, Derek, I've got no problem with that. And as I said earlier, we should embrace it. But I know that we have a fantastic IT department. And if you've got a problem with your iPad, or you can't use it, walk across, you'll sit down with it. They'll mentor you for an hour and a half, an hour, whatever you need to go through it. So I don't want to really give the impression here that, you know, there's people who haven't got the support and the help because there is. Carson and his team, we go across, you sit there, you work your way through it. Some members are, are, are at different stages with iPads, and that's fine too. But I think it's important that members, again, and I seem to be having go here today, but I'm not, take the time and find the time to go over to IT if they have a problem. It isn't just about waiting for the training, it's about knocking the door asking. They're very helpful, they're supportive, and that's the advice I give my group. So the advice I would give to all members, use the IT department, that's what it's there for. And if, you're, if, if you want more, I'm sure they'll help and assist you. Thank you, Jen. Can I come back on that? Honestly, the problem is I don't know what I don't know. I can't go there and ask them for something I don't know if you can do on here. If it was a, a, a laptop I had, I know most of the tricks of the trade with a laptop, but I don't know what I don't know. And the whole idea from the meeting that we had in July, I think it was, was making the list of what you can and can't do on this and then move it forward. And that's why it was suggested and it was strongly stressed by Linda, Mark, uh, Owen, and uh, Jermaine that we should be using, you know, this isn't replacing it, it's just a helpful guide. But one of the things I suggested, for example, if we're having a group meeting, Adrienne could meet us half an hour before, if, she's, if she becomes our champion uh, after Monday's meeting, and she could advise people what you can and can't do after the five of them have all met. So I, I don't see it replacing uh, IT support, I think it enhances it, because I would tr far rather go to one of my uh, group members and ask them a silly question, in my view, and go to someone in IT and ask them what I think is a silly question. So it's, just, it's not to replace, it's to enhance what we've got now. Thank you. And can I just add, because from our meeting on Monday, um, I think certainly um, IT is definitely there. We have Guy Roberts here this afternoon from IT as well, and we have a service there. And certainly they're there to assist and help with any problems. What is clear is that, as you say, that some members are at different levels and some have found 
lots of different things that are really useful to their role that perhaps officers, you know, we're doing a different job to what elected members are doing. So that elected members, if they found, for example, uh, I think it was mentioned on Monday, a one way of, you know, I can take a picture of a pothole, I can upload it, I can do this with it, um, that officers themselves, you know, wouldn't think of, oh, you know, doing that, um, that those members as sort of champions who found those, you know, really good uses for it, if they shared those between them, that pools knowledge, um, you know, it, it's non-political, it's across the groups, and then that can be used to develop, you know, you know, specific training or help for members to bring them on other other uses that they may not have found for the other types yet. Yeah, that's good. Okay, uh, Brian. Thanks, Chair. Um, I don't want to be seen to be sitting on the fence when I usually do, but I'm not all jumping ship. I fully support uh, what Mark said because the three times or four times I've been to IT, I've had complete satisfaction. But I do support uh, Derek in the fact that um, I have some knowledge on a, on a PC, but I don't have the same knowledge on desk. And as he says, I don't know what I don't know. Um, the the idea of political group, it wasn't for political purposes, it was just a fact of convenience. And if, if we usually meet at 6.30 on a, um, on a Monday usually. If we met at 6 and I and Derek wanted to see Adrienne, it would be very useful to spend half an hour with her on that. We're back to what Mark said earlier, oh sorry, Councillor Pritchard said earlier on the um, the chair training, I think is essential. Um, and as you can see from the, the lack of care, I've been around a long time, and chairman training to me is a basic um, requirement. And would it be possible to push it from this meeting today, or would it have to be go on the agenda for yeah. future yeah. meetings? I just want to clarify some of the discussion so I can take note for my actions. Just so it's walking down. Oh, sorry. And move on. I think there's some confusion here about what Derek's suggesting being a new way of member training. And it's not. It's defining um, the role of IT champions as to develop a skills matrix, really, so that that skills matrix then can be used as a fast track for the right training that members need and member specific training. Um, so I think that's a great way forward to be honest and through that those IT champions then it can be shared across all 52 members. So it's a fast track route just to develop a skills matrix and I think that, you know that is a long time overdue to be honest. So fully supportive of what um, Derek suggested and I hope um, the committee take that on board and we can move forward. I think looking around the room everybody's in the same boat at different levels of uh, expertise with the iPad and I think both um, ideas should be involved. I wish I was in the same boat. <laughs> 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 um, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, 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 yeah. um, sorry, I just want to introduce myself. Obviously I'm newly to post. My name is Di Roberts. I'm new head of service for ICT. Um, I'm hearing a lot of what you're saying. Firstly, thank you Councillor Pritchard. Uh, and so for your comments on my IT team, that gives me a lot of faith in them and being able to support you as members and making sure you have the tools uh, appropriate to be able to carry out your important roles. Um, I am keen to ensure that the training is a success and it's, it is important. Um, and I want to make sure that um, we can support you as best as we can going forward with that. So it's, um, it is a focus that's going to be. Obviously, Councillor Wright has um, written to the um, we're trying to identify these champions. I think it's going to be important that we work with these champions to perhaps you say you don't know what you don't know. If we can inform these champions and work with these champions and um, also find out best practice um, and pass those skills on and down. Um, again, I'd like any member to feel welcome within IT. Um, we are a good bunch from what I can understand over there, and I think you can say that the service you're already getting is, is good. So I'd, uh, I'd like to thank you for your comments as well. If there's anything else, please. Um, and they're also based in the old library, just opposite Carsten's office, so please come in and knock my door and come and have a chat with me at any time.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alan? Yeah, I, I'd like to just first say I'm not talking about the right parts because I don't know what my knowledge is. But that's the last thing in front of me. I just want to depart from it all. I've got to say they have got a lot of patience because when I've been there, they've, they've been very patient with me. And if you can be patient with me, then like that, you can be patient with anybody. But I'd like to think Car Carsten and, and everybody that's there. You know, when we've had a problem, they go. Yeah, if, it, if it is uh, acceptable, it was suggested at the meeting that there's a training that uh, would with member development session on the 9th of December, and that could become uh, iPad training day, if you like. And what was suggested was that the, the groups, the political groups, elect their, elect, select whatever word you want to use, their champions to go to a meeting prior to that to identify what is lacking, and then you can it was suggested that there could be maybe three or four different rooms that the training takes place in, whereby you could go to the one that most fits the one, the training you require. So uh, if you could ask your groups to get someone elected or selected, whichever way you want to do it, to attend the champions training or champions meeting on uh, between now and December the 9th, then it could be that we have a, we kick the full iPad thing off on the 9th of December. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mary. Uh, Councillor Pritchard. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. Just to confirm, Andy Williams has been our IT champion for two years, and he's done it very well, and it's been very productive for our group. So, Andy Williams, for us. Thank you. Mark, if I could add, though, he hasn't bought, only been for your group. He's no, I, well, I didn't want to say no, that. No, but he has, he has been, been very parties. helpful he to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think he should be commended for the work he's done. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? No. Please. So can I just check, the last general chairing skills training and strategic chairing skills training happened in May, and looking at the numbers of attendance, it was 13 on one, 12 on the other, so if we look at putting another, some more sessions on around chairing meetings, but also look at the learning objectives to make sure that they cover call over and reports. Can we, can we look to perhaps incorporate them in the, the morning session and an early evening rather than yeah, six hour session as well? Because seven, it, it? It, does, it could depend if Sarah Titcom is the one because she gets her train home. So yeah. it'll, it'll be depend It's five like o'clock um, convenience even you know, because that's it. So it depends on Sarah. Yeah, Sarah's the right. one from LGA. Yeah. Ah, right. I'll, I'll look the same for that. We'll ask it to work in our church, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to item 7. Uh, then the uh, members of the and independents of the Renewables and Thank you. Thank you. Do we need a recommendation before we do? Sorry, sir. We need a recommendation that this committee supports the um, the five champions to be put in place and for the training to go ahead as well. Yeah, but we need we need some form of resolution from this committee to go forward, I feel. Yeah. Everybody happy with that? Yeah. Show of hands. And Dan just to come back. Yeah, sorry, I've got another point to raise on the um, agenda item six to be honest. Um, because I think it firmly sits with with this committee. Um, if committee could look at developing an ethical behaviour and public life policy, because I think we're desperate in Wrexham for that policy to go to full council. Um, I'm happy myself to contribute towards that. Um, <coughs> and I think all 52 councillors are responsible for how we act, what we say, and how we behave. Um, and I know nationally there's been discussions now for at least three years but there's no pace of change. And I think we in Wrexham should be setting the bar. Um, I know we've got the code of conduct and that is across all, um, you know, in Wales, um, in, in England nationally. But I think the difficulty that we've got with the code of conduct, because it's not behavior specific, it is very subjective and because of that as well, it's really difficult for our monitoring officers, who are the independent, um, you know, the, um, they're the independent um, opinion on 
code of conduct and behaviour, I think it's really difficult for them to be able to police how things have changed and how behaviour has, um, oh, well, how poor behaviour is becoming even poorer. Um, and I think in, in the policy, um, if members are, are willing to um, develop the policy, I think in that policy we can address that and potentially give more powers to our independent monitoring officer in order to improve the standard that we see now, you know, quite regular. Um, and I think we, we have to realise as elected members how we behave has a huge impact on how society behaves. We are leaders of our, we're all leaders, we're all leaders of our communities. And we have to step up to the plate now because there's so much happening on a national basis where I think, you know, this constant poor behavior now is really um, attacking what democracy is all about. So I'd really appreciate it if this committee will look at developing an ethical behaviour in public life for Wrexham, and I hope we set, then set the standards in Wrexham where other local authorities and wider governments will take on board and adopt that policy. Can I just come in on that? Because I appreciate what, what you're saying. Um, but actually, really, that falls within the remit of Standards Committee, not this committee. This committee could look at training on that, but if we're looking at a policy that would be linked with code of conduct on ethical behaviour, it really would be standards committee, which has independent members on it as well, to take that forward, not this committee to develop that. But Can I come back on that? It's brilliant. Because it needs to be driven by members, yeah. and that this was the only forum that I could see that yeah. we could, that we as members could actually drive that. So what would I need to do then for to take that to standards? Because I'm not a member of standards. I, I deal with standards committee as well. And it is something that is already on our radar. And um, we are looking at uh, probably taking the report. Maybe we've got a next meeting in December to look at behaviour and, and developing that. Uh, and as you say, you know, an ethical behaviour policy may very well be the way to do that. We don't currently have a chair of that committee because he stepped down in September, so a new chair will be elected in December. But I intend meeting with the vice chair before then to, to look at this. And I can certainly take that forward with the vice chair um, to look at what we can do within the standards committee to develop that. One final question. Can I link in with you over that yeah. one? Because this Certainly. this is really, yeah. really important. And I think yeah. we, you know, all 52 of us, we have a choice here um, to make things, you know, to improve standards, to find that baseline and to be accountable in public life. Yeah. And that is really, really important to me. So if I can work Certainly. with you on that, yeah. that'd be great. Thank you. I think it's the duty of a choice, can't we? Yeah, but it is, it, it's a choice on how you behave as well. So people are making the wrong choices and we need to change that behaviour. Thank you. Sorry, uh, and item six now, sorry, uh, uh, review of member development and strategy. Louise again, please. That was just a quick verbal update to say when we reviewed the sorry, that, when we reviewed the member development strategy, we also agreed to reapply for charter status. So I sent the self assessment form earlier this year to, to the chair and suggested perhaps we should set up a task and finish group and that any members who were involved in the two thousand and eight um, submission could perhaps be part of that task and finish group and I said I was quite happy to pull all the evidence together and um, I've got, actually got the file from 2008 which is about this thick. I've spoken to Sarah Titko and obviously a lot of it can be done electronically now so we wouldn't have to 
lump this um, big old pile around. But I suppose it's um, having a group that we're going to get together and have a look at that submission. And actually, what what you just said about the, the behaviours and the, that all links to to that. To the, I know I'm not a member of this committee, but if the committee are willing, I would like to be involved in that if possible, because it's all about the contribution you can make to improve things, isn't it? So, but that's entirely set to the committee, so I'll understand it. There's many members on the committee who want to be involved. Has anybody got any thoughts on what that was proposed? Hmm, the question finished. Uh, it probably support what's been said, but uh, it's a little bit like um, David and Goliath, isn't it? Because if our uh, national politicians can't behave themselves, we've got a difficulty with local, but perhaps we should do the lead in yet at the Wrexham Council. Um, the, the position that were you asking whether I support Dan of being on that committee rather than a, um, I would support it because of the experience, but. Um, it's, it's up to the committee to decide whether we uh, go for committee person first or uh, no, uh, non committee member. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Brian. Alan? I support that. I, I unfortunately can't uh, make it a thing, so if you could take my place then. Yeah. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Sorry, Jeff? I think that the problem that we've got doing it from this committee. Only Alan and Malcolm who were in the, on the yeah. council in 2008. Yeah. And if you want people from that, it's going to have to be spread wider than this committee. So, therefore, I don't see anything wrong with going to the political groups. You know, this committee giving the political groups the power to nominate people onto the task and finish. Mm -hmm. But I would hope either the chair or vice chair of this committee sit on that committee as chair, both as chair, really. And, and one from each group would be, you know, would be good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but also with the, I would say the chair and vice chair. Yeah. So that, that would be my, my recommendation because we just haven't got three years service in the people from this committee. Okay. One of the ones who have got the service in can't do it because of personal circumstances. So therefore it's better to go to the groups. But this committee again needs to recommend that that's what we do. And I would propose that that's what we do. Yeah. Cool. Just move on to the Sorry. Sorry, I'll second that. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else got anything to say before we perhaps put it to the vote? No. Yeah. So we're looking at a task and finish group to assist with the presentation yeah. of that application. Mm -hmm. One from the groups, so I would say again five. So it'd be one from the two independent groups, one from the Conservatives, one from uh, the Labour Party, and one from the others. The Clyde, non aligned, and the Liberals. Yeah, and the chair and vice chair of this committee. Right for the task and finish. So, Brian seconded it. Show hands. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just before you go, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really confused now with the emails we've had over the last couple of days. Is the effective scrutiny train on the 11th 11 still taking place? Because I don't know, a couple of days ago we've had emails come in saying one's cancelled, one's not cancelled. I, I just so confused, I don't know. But if it's possible, could it be confirmed if it's on or not that training? It's well, on our chart here. I want to say it's cancelled, but I'm going to do it. Yeah, no, but I, I, yeah. I just want to say that the emails I've had, I couldn't make anyone say other than the end. I just would like um, clarification if it's not on or if it is on. I'm 99% sure that it's not on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, David. Thank you. Um, move on to item seven now. Uh, member remuneration and dependent review. Remuneration panel for Wales. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, um, this is the report that uh, discusses the draft annual report that's come out from the independent remuneration panel for Wales, which we are asked to consider. Um, and you will see from the report that this year the IRPW is proposing to increase the basic salary for elected members by £350 per annum. There are no additional increases proposed for senior salaries, so 
it would be simply that every member of £350 is no difference of between mayor, leader, etc. this year. So members are asked to consider the proposals and provide any representations or comments that we will report back to the ILPW by the 10th of December. We need to do that. Um, you will see um, from the background in the report, the panel are keen to ensure that members are properly remunerated. Um, they're well aware of the difficulties faced by councils with their budgets, but they do want to make sure that members are properly remunerated. And although, of course, it's a, the basic salary is supposed to cover a nominal sort of three days per week, they are fully aware that members often um, uh, undertake far more hours than that. And they also want to look to the future to ensure that uh, members of the community considering standing, for example, in the next elections are not put off with the thought that um, you know, they may need to give up work or work less to be able to undertake this role. So they do recognise that it, it does need to um, be set at a level to allow um, members to properly carry out their tasks but also, as I say, to encourage those for the future who may want to stand and, uh, you know, may be in difficult financial circumstances and would be put off if there was, uh, you know, low pay, or, you know, or little or no pay for the job. So they do try and balance, when they're looking at it, uh, the budgets of councils against actually being able to properly remunerate members for what they do and encourage those in the future to consider standing. So I would say that the, that's what's been put forward in the annual report this year for consideration by members and um, I have listened to the recommendations this afternoon so we can feed back the comments to the panel. Thank you. Thank you very much Linda. Uh, I'll ask uh, Alan first. Yeah. Thanks Chair. Um, like a few years ago we met the panel Panel, and I'm glad to see that they've actually listened a little bit to our, uh, what we said because I, I know uh, I get who's in when we had Mike Morris was born when we met him as, as we were chairs and I said at the time uh, and I, I'll back it up now that basically there was too much differential between the higher paid ones the exec board and the chairs and the ordinary councillors and actually I think should be closer you know it's a lower scale we have to address because I know people might think and all councillors I've said they get slated in the press and uh, press over there Liam <laughs> <laughs> no but we get, we get <laughs> slated <laughs> in the press but when you the hours you say three days a year but councillors are doing hours at home on the phone uh, doing work in the communities if they can. It won't be for me, I, I, as people know, if I uh, be standing down, but to encourage people, I feel that, that bottom there has got to go up, got to go up a lot. And if it means that you have to find the money from the top, top there, the exec board, or the chairs, I think that's what's got to be done. Because I don't think. I know, as much as people say, I don't think anybody goes in to the council thinking, or stands as a councillor thinking, I'm doing it for the money. You know, they're not. You, you know, you'd be mad to, and everything. But my, I'm glad that they've actually given rise to the, I'd like to see it a lot more, to be honest with you, on the bottom pier lit, and, and leave the top lit more. But uh, I think Derek was with me, with the chairs, because we wanted the chairs left at the lower grade, mm -hmm. which they did, but I do, I do feel, that, you know, that, and as for the rise, and I know different people give um, their money to charities, and we, we, have, we have this discussion all the time at whether they should. But my feeling over that is I wouldn't ever think of telling anybody else to do their money, you know, what it is, and. Um, when I first went, we got on the council. We used to set our own wage wages, which I thought was absolutely crazy. 
So now we've got the remuneration panel. Uh, we've got to do it. Whatever anybody else wants, wants to do with that rise is up to them. I'm not going to interfere with that. But I, I, I would like to encourage the remuneration panel to actually lift the lower rate either, even if it means fetching the, 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 the exec board and the chairs lower. Thank you. Uh, John? Thank you, Chair. Um, I think we kicked this to death last year. I've got a feeling that any independent review panel that's offered to us, we just accept. Last year, it got very political. The political groups said, we're not going to accept it. We're going with the press and tell them that we shouldn't accept it. Some people here, it's their only income. It's totally up to them as individuals, nothing to do with political parties. If, if we all accept it, you've only got to write to the pay department. If you don't want to accept it, and they won't put it on your salary. Or you can accept it, use it on a holiday, or give it to charity, do whatever you want. I don't think it should even be up for discussion whether we accept it or not. It just should be a given. It's what you do with it, or don't accept it, and everybody's got the right not to accept it. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, Dan, and next, please. Quite a few to talk on this. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think the question here is, do we deem a 2.5% increase to be fair, and my understanding is that the public sector increase um, this year is 2%. We've all been in our budgets and everything. So I would suggest 2.5% for elected members is not fair, and I would consider it to be fairer if it was a match on the public sector, you know, across Wales. Um, because I hear what you're saying with regards to, you know, it's supposed to um, demonstrate a three-day-a-week job. Um, members can do more than that, but it's by choice. Um, and I understand about, you know, there'll be more diversity in elected members, and I understand that side of the argument, and recognise that that can be linked to you know, to remuneration. But for me, I don't think 2.5 is fair. For me, you know, matching um, public sector, average pay, I'm taking teachers out of the equation because teachers have been dealt a, a horrendous um, blow in, in pay over a number of years. But the average public sector pay increase, it would be fairer if this match that and that's why I think the independent the independent remuneration panel for Wales are not being fair in their determination within this report and I would ask members that the um, that the um, consideration back to the IRPW would be in that manner of it being unfair. Thank you Donna. Uh, uh, Rob? Thank you, Chair. Uh, it's a bit like Groundhog Day, this, uh, talking about um, uh, members' remuneration. Um, and I think that there have been a lot of valid points already made from a lot of individuals. Uh, but I think one comment which John made was that should we even be, dis be discussing this? Well, I suppose we have to discuss because we've got to be transparent. But at the same time, um, it's got to be clear we cannot influence this. Okay, we could perhaps right to the IRP, which we've done in, in the past, and maybe that might be one of our recommendations from today's meeting, but they've not listened to us in the past. I'd be very, very surprised if they listen to us in the future. But I think why it's very, very clear, uh, because again, this is a local press story, and also I'll, I'll commend the press for the articles they do, but we still have the issue with too many people perhaps just read the headline from the stories and then just feel that we are making a decision, we are deciding, we're going to give ourselves a pay rise, which is not the case at all. Uh, I don't believe any of the of the 52 members would choose to do that if they if they could, but it's not, it is not our choice. But in terms of going forward, I do appreciate that there's generally, not just for the council, there's a lack of confidence in, um, in politicians. Yeah. And I think that is something that, um, that we have to, we can't, we can't deal with this item ourselves, but we should be able to sign point the public who 
might, may have concerns about this in terms of either through education about how the actual system works or whether or where to go for them to launch objections because they can object to us as much as they like but we can't we can't actually do anything about this and with regard to what individuals do with it because we can't decide collectively that the 52 of us um, won't accept this pay increase but even if all 52 of us decided personally not to take up the increase I don't think it's something we can really budget for because somebody could change their mind and they have every right to throughout the year um, to say actually um, it's my circumstances have changed I'll, I'll have that increase again and and they could write to the, the finance officer and accept that. So it is, so it probably won't deal much with the, bu with the budget, but again, I suppose it's that public perception in terms of, of how we signpost. Again, we can perhaps write to the RFA. I think what Dana said is a very valid point, but it's a case of will we, um, or, 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 or will they actually listen here? But um, in terms of advice, in terms of going way forward in, with, with public confidence, my advice to any any member of the public who's actually who who ends up um, watching this or reading the articles is um, is by all means if you've got concerns write to the IRP yourselves with those concerns write to the Welsh government I'm not trying to palm this off on them but but in terms of if this is ever going to be addressed and I don't know what the answer is because what we've got now at least is better than um, what we had before where councillors actually make the decision. But if anybody has got any ideas of how to do this in a more transparent, fair way, I'm, I'm open to those uh, ideas. But I think going forward, um, um, I'd perhaps support maybe uh, another letter to the IRP with our concerns like we did last year. But will we get, will we get us into identity? Are you really getting that wrong? Um, would, you like me, would you like me to? Please. Okay. Um, um, okay um, you make a recommendation. I'll, I'll make a recommendation that... Um, that we write a similar letter to last year with concerns about the amount. The percentage amount. Yeah, percentage amount. Well, yeah. 2%. Oh, IRPW matching it to yeah. Yeah, public. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Debbie? Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I have got concerns um, about the pay rise, and, um, but I do agree with everything that's been said here today. But um, my concerns are that, you know, <laughs> residents um, within my ward are already complaining about this, and I can understand why with the budget. So, um, so therefore, like, um, I think it is uh, a personal choice for everyone. Like I said, I agree with everything that's been said. But personally, I won't be taking This has been kicked around for the last two years, certainly since I've been elected, and it's been debated to death. The pay rise of 2.5% has been determined by what it says, the Independent Remuneration Panel for Wales, and that is exactly what it is. It's independent. As councillors, I've said it before and I'll probably say it again. I personally don't feel that we should go anywhere near setting our own pay rise. I will be supporting the 2.5%. As to what councillors do with it is their individual business. I do feel, looking forward, that we do need to encourage young people to come into politics, local politics, and to do that, there's got to be a decent remuneration. Councillors do work hard. We've alluded to a three-day week. Personally, I would say yes. it's a seven-day week, 24 hours a day week. If anybody in the public have any doubts, to do whether or not councillors earn their money, 
I will offer them to come and shadow me for a day or a week in my ward to see just exactly how hard a councillor does work. So do I think 2.5% is fair? Yes, I do. I take on board what Councillor Davis has said about 2% for the public sector. That is the public sector. This is what an independent panel have come up with. How they've come to that conclusion is their business. They know it, we don't. But they obviously feel that councillors deserve a 2.5% pay rise. Do I think we should write to them? Personally, we've done that for the last two years. I don't know if there's a polite way to say this. Um, they've not taken any notice of us in the past. And to be quite honest, I can't see what notice they're going to take of us in the future. So personally, I think it may well be a waste of time writing to them. But if that's what the committee want, I'll agree to it. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Actually, look at the full draft report, which I know I have read. It's nearly yes, 80 yes, pages long. Yes. <laughs> They've been asking us to comment. They do, yeah. but they do also explain their reasoning for how they come up with the amount because they do look at comparisons across sectors. It's not just a figure plucked out of the air. So they do go into quite some detail to work it out, and, and there is more detail in the full report available there. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, Brian, sir. <laughs> yes, Chair. Um, I could I could agree with everybody here on the points made. I could I could make an argument about the nurses who are on pay freezes and one percent and all sorts over a number of years. Um, but nevertheless, we I think we're obliged to reply to this panel. Um, it's our job to give our thoughts. I wouldn't like to be the one who's writing it out because there's been a variety of things. And I agree with uh, Alan that um, if it's got, it needs to be attractive to people who are uh, looking forward to standing. But then I worry about the panel. The, the last sentence of uh, page 14, uh, there's no way that they're going to get what they want. It says, it is therefore a matter of balancing issues of affordability and public perception with fairness to members for their time, worth and responsibility. Who in these days is going to get that balance? You, you, they're not going to get it. So I worry about the panel putting it there in the first place. Um, it's impossible to uh, balance affordability with public perception when uh, this council, like every other council, I've been forced to make massive cuts uh, you know, and the three week bins of forecasts and all sorts of things. Um, you'll never get, you're gonna get the public to believe that uh, I will be worth 14,000 pounds a year. Um, I do, and I agree with the, the hours put in by councillors. Um, I wish I'd start working at um, six o'clock in the evening and not going on till you know from ten o'clock in the evening till three which is my favorite favorite hours but um councillors do work hard and whichever political thing you are they, they do work hard but i do worry that they put that in because it, you could you could argue about that from now till ever um i think we should put a response um and when everybody's spoken i think we should formulate it, that response because that is our task. Okay, thank you. So there's, there's one recommendation of um, of Rob at the moment, Terry. So. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I looked at this quite selfishly. Uh, all the previous years I've been on the council, uh, and when I watched the video that Linda sent us on November the first, I appreciate more how this affects uh, people that are not in my circumstances, uh, and I feel that. I do agree with what Dan said. I, I think the amount is wrong, but I would be uh, I wouldn't be as I was in all previous years saying it's wrong for them to set the bar where it's been set, because I think without this, it's going to prevent people becoming councillors, and that's my fear after seeing the video. I don't I, It only went to uh, members of this committee, unfortunately. It wasn't spread amongst the 
Okay. I can send it out by yeah, but I, I think it's, if you see that, you can see how much difference it makes to someone, you know, if they're being paid, being a councillor, not being paid, they couldn't be councillors. And I think, uh, I think it brought the truth home to me. I'm sure myself and the others, councillors, who are in a better position than others, will give the rights to charity as we've done in all the previous years. But I, I do think uh, that it is important that that uh, salary level for councillors does keep uh, pace with inflation. Maybe it's, it's a little bit higher as Dan suggested. It should be at 2% rather than at 2.5%. Uh, but uh, I've changed my mind completely after watching that video because I do feel that if you reduce that uh, uh, salary or not uh, inflation proof, it then is going to prevent some people from being councillors. And as John suggested, some people on this council, that's their only form of income. And now, who are we to, um, to say they shouldn't be adequately paid for it and get an inflation revise to go with it? So I would uh, suggest that we write the letter and I would suggest it be on the lines that Dan has suggested that we can see how they've come up with a figure of 2.5%. We feel a rise in line with other public sector pay would be 2% would have been a fair rise. And I would recommend that. Well, that, that, that's my recommendation that Rob's going to yeah. that will be taken in. So, uh, Alan, yeah, just just coming back to what Sorry. Derek, just coming back to what Derek said. I totally agree with that, Derek. I didn't see the video, but that's what I'm saying. I when I said that people don't go to become councillor for the money, yeah. I, I firmly believe that. You know, they they've got to have it in their heart to become a councillor first. Like, but what it does, people that are doing good work are there and everything. It is preventing them from becoming good councillors in my mind yeah. because, you know, I, I, we, uh, we're losing people who's good councillors. And, and also, I, 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 think, I, I think, think it was Krista that said, looked around the room and she saw middle-aged well, men yes, losing their, well, yeah. I'm glad to talk about the middle-aged <laughs> men. But if you want any young people to come through, we have got to make it in. And when I go back to it again, if it means putting the bar between the IOA and the, the ordinary councillor, you know, closer and saving money, you know, freezing the top at level, well, so be it. But you, you need to encourage young people and good people out there that, to become a councillor. Thank you. Thank you. Well, okay. Thank you for the... Thanks for letting me come back here. It's a bit, a bit concerning actually, because um, I'm actually, I would, I'm probably one of the youngest members of this council, and yet if you look at the, um, I don't have much on top, so that's a bit of a story. Well, that's the best hairstyle as well. Um, no, as I said, I've already made a recommendation, and again, there are various options open to us. One of them is again, noting the report, we don't have to make a comment, but just out of interest, again, um, if we decided, no, we disagree with all this, we, we think it's absolute, absolutely wrong, uh, we're not going to note the report, what would happen? Would I write in thinking by just saying that, um, by that, things will just happen as they are anyway? Well, well it's, a, it, it's a draft report at the moment from the ILPW. They circulate and ask all councils, uh, the national parks, etc. they're all affected, to comment by the 10th of December. So they are seeking views. Yeah. Um, I know, you know, you may feel that, uh, you know, nothing happens, but I know from meeting with the ILPW, they do, for example, look back at what have been previous responses. Yeah. Um, and this year, certainly, they took on board to just say, well, we'll only increase the basics. We're not going to increase further any of the other yeah. uh, salaries by extra. And, they, and that was partly taken on board previous feedback of concerns about budgets. So. Okay, that's fine. Uh, John? <clears throat> Excuse me, yeah. We've been talking about 2.5%. It's 2.5% of the basic level, right? For people who are in senior roles, it's nothing like 2.5%. So I don't want people to think that everybody is getting 2.5% across the board. It's only a fraction of 1% to some people, and it is their full time jobs. So I, I think people should be made aware of the fact that. It's just a lump sum of representing 2.5% on the lower paid grade of councils. Yeah. 
It's not it's not two and a half percent over a salary. It's no. an amount of money that equates to two and a half percent. On that lowest base. Of the lowest band. Yes. So yeah. I, I was getting confused then because you're talking about one percent. It is two and a half percent on that basic lowest band. Yeah, but salary. it's nothing like that to somebody who's on 40 odd thousand or the deputy leader or the leader. Yeah, I'm it's not talking like about that. It's yeah. basic salary amount. Yeah. I, I just want that made clear yeah. that it's not everybody's yeah. getting two and a half. But that should match public sector in the right. basis. So we've got one recommendation of uh, Council Walsh. Anybody else like to do it? Yeah, no. So we've got a well, block proposal. Is there a second there? Yeah. Derek, can you show hands? Sorry, sorry, yeah. yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. Item number, sorry, item yeah. number eight now. Just, just before you go on, um, is there the typo on page 15? Salaries proposed in 2019 20 and salary levels in Wrexham. Yes, there is. That's the title. That, that was put in specially to see if you said it. Well done. You get an extra point then. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not extra. Extra Donated to you. Sorry, back to item number eight now. It's the uh, reimbursement of, of costs of care. Uh, Linda. Yes, thank you. Um, I, I brought this one because the IRPW, it's linked. Um, with them as well, and their draft report this year, because they particularly urge democratic services committees to take steps to encourage and facilitate greater use of the reimbursement of cost of care so that members are not financially disadvantaged. Um, their concerns are that in Wales, there are very few elected members who are taking this up. Um, it's available for members um, whether they're elected or co-opted actually, up to a maximum £403 per month to cover um, the costs of care when they need to attend meetings, for example. And it's designed that it's not just only costs of caring for children, it could be um, a, an elderly relative, it could be a disabled relative, it could be somebody who you normally care for as a member, and that uh, unless you can actually arrange some separate care for them, you would not be able to attend your council meetings. And the IRPW are concerned about this because there is such a low take up across Wales that they really want uh, democratic services committees to consider, is there anything that can be done to encourage um, this with members? Obviously, it, uh, it may not apply to all members, but there may be some members um, out there who um, would appreciate and it would help them fulfil their roles by being able to <coughs> use this. Um, so I say it, it's open really for the committee to consider is there anything that could be done to help encourage this on the uptake and for members to, to, to raise their awareness, for example, on what can be done about it. Um, Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm really pleased that this has come forward as a separate report because normally it comes forward with the whole report as a single determination, doesn't it, by the IRPW. Um, the meeting that Alan spoke about um, that we had a couple of years ago with the IRPW, um, I was called in because I was identified as a working mother and um, I had a long discussion with the IRPW about this because really they wanted me to, I don't know, potentially lead the way in Wrexham so that this policy would be embedded. Um, my circumstances um, didn't warrant me, you know, um, taking this forward. My children were older. Um, but this is really, really important from the point of view of we have a number of carers out there that are caring for, um, like you said, elderly relatives. It's not just 
from a childcare point of view. And I think one of the things that is off-putting um, to members across Wales, really, is that it would be calculated under your expenses. And I think if we can line it out that it is a cost of care, it makes it more transparent and less questionable. Um, because there's, you know, there's a reason, and the safeguards, the safeguards within this, you have to, you know, table an invoice or table. So the safeguards are already within this. So I think if we can line this out as a separate line from the point of view of, you know, we do have members with those responsibilities and we're making that then transparent, then it just coming under the full clump of expenses, um, then I think, it, in all fairness, anybody who is looking regularly at, tr uh, at expenses will then be able to identify this is a way of that member being able to participate in meetings rather than this is just an expense that members can get. Um, and I, I think that would be the way forward. Yeah. But I fully support this report, and I think it's key that Wrexham, and we as members should be doing everything we can to support our members who are living in those circumstances, but still trying to um, you know, be, be um, involved in public life and contribute to, to public life. Can I just emphasise and say, um, it, it used to be a choice for authorities out there, including the report there, to decide how to publish any claims. But the ILPW have made it absolutely clear now that we should not publish them and identify members with them. It should only be a global figure for the authority. Right. Which is even, which is, which yeah, is which much is better. Even better. But yeah. when yeah. we're talking about expenses and, and, you know, and elected members, I thought we had to publish everything. So I'm, even, I'm yeah. even more pleased by that then, because mm -hmm. otherwise it, it could identify your most vulnerable members, yeah. and that would make me uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I put it under <coughs> paragraph 4.4 of the report, and, and the refer reference to the annex in it, but they've specifically said now we should only publish a total amount reimbursed for a year, and that's across members, so it's not to identify an individual as claiming. Um, and as included there, uh, also under freedom of information, if we were asked specifically, we would seek to um, uh, exempt that information because it, otherwise it's identifying, for example, yeah. that you're caring for a vulnerable adult yeah. or a child or something like it's that. Your and circumstances. Isn't and it? Those, yeah. that information should not be disclosed. That we would, you know, quite rightly publish a global figure for the council if anybody claimed, but we wouldn't link that to an individual because that wouldn't be right. And that that's been the fear in the past that it would identify individuals that individuals have put off claiming because it's going to be linked to their name, um, can, which it shouldn't be. Can I make a suggestion? Can I ask that we contact members if they feel that they um, are in a set of circumstances where this would be able to support them, that because of that confidentiality, that they liaise direct with Linda, yeah. and if we can get that information out to demonstrate the protections yeah. that this um, determination by the IRPW offers them as well, and just, you know, obviously make it a good thing rather than mm. what could be um, perceived at the moment of an expense claim. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think John's next is a couple of meetings. Thank you, Chair. I don't know if it was just me that missed it. I didn't even know this existed, mm. right? Mm -hmm. That's a fact. I don't know yeah. how many others. I've only been in council two and a half years now. But, but I think, as we all say, there's a lot of elderly, for say, wise uh, councillors. And I think to somebody, it's the equivalent of somebody with children saying there's free crash facilities. It's got to open it to other people to apply or consider being a councillor because they think, mm. because that's a main concern of theirs is, what do I do with the children? What do I do with the old father that I look after? Or what do I do with whoever? And I don't think, I think it's something you should publicise the fact. Yeah. If anybody's thinking, certainly when you come in near an election, if anybody's thinking of applying, not only do you get paid, right? But there are facilities for care of some sort you can be reimbursed. So come on and apply. We, we want more people. And we want, should I say, more of the younger element? 
they were the only ones anyway, so I mean, I, I don't want to get ageist against anybody, but you know what I'm saying? I think we could bring in more people who would show an interest where that could be critical to them applying. But I'm kidding. Yeah. John Pazanik is the next thing. Yeah, I was going to suggest something along the lines of what Dan was suggested. Is there a, like a list is uh, made up of things that you can, or items that you can claim for if members of your family are suffering? So then, you know, a councillor can only send out to all 52 councillors, so the councillor can then read that and see if he applies. And then I would suggest they confidentially contact, I don't know if Linda would be in a position to advise them, yeah. but they have one point of contact in the council confidentially to see if it applies to them and how they go about claiming it. Yeah. And to me then that takes away um, you know, anyone's embarrassment if you like. Because I know certain individuals who do have problems with relatives and would gain from assistance. I'm not saying financial assistance, but if financial assistance was there and they felt they needed it, they could then use it. So I I just think that's the best way around a difficult situation. And if it's done, you know, I, I, like a generic letter saying what you, what this uh, you know, 403 pounds a month could cover, yeah. then I think me as an individual could read it in the privacy of my own home, see if it's suitable to me, and then I can contact Linda, have a meeting with her, go through what my, you know, if necessary, bring in medical certificates, whatever's needed, yeah. and then let Linda make the decision if I should apply for it, or help me make the decision if I should apply. So individual eligibility, basically. Yeah, yeah, but, but, yeah, but it, it must be it must be done purely confidentially. Yeah. So then the iPad training is going to be good, so they don't put reply to all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I just think that that would be the best way around it, and I would recommend that that will be put forward as a committee to go go ahead and to to be done as soon as possible. You know, before the end of this week or even the beginning of next week, so everyone has an idea of what they can and can't claim for. Okay, thanks, guys. Uh, Alan? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I totally agree with everything Derek said. Um, and it's not just elderly, looking after elderly people. We've got young people that have parents, mm -hmm. and they, they, they're looking mm -hmm. after their parents, I think. Yeah. And once I get the, once I, again, I go, these are the people we've got to attract to, to the council, you know. We, they, in years to come, they're going to be our councillors. So any help we can give to uh, to to encourage and like that a dancer, I know there's one. And you know you can't allow mothers to actually finish. Can you be careful yeah, about identifying yeah. councillors? Because yeah. we've got to. Can I ask the press not to publish yeah. that? Yeah. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm an unnamed councillor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. From another but, county. But yeah. I know Alan knows. I know her well, and that's know, why he said it. Yeah. yeah. I, I trust the, the two yeah. press members here. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Can you edit but, that? But they also, I tell you, I'm going to fetch on to the press. And why I think it's really good about confidentiality, because. Let's be fair, we're living in a world where uh, people pick things up on the internet, they know where vulnerable people are living, yeah. if, if it's all uh, on the press and everything. So I, I think confidential is, you know, needed, and they, but I support everything Derek said, and I do apologise. It's fine, it's not me. <laughs> you know me, I have to say what comes out of your mouth. Is there anybody else that'd like to speak? Yeah, uh, sorry, Brian. Yeah, sorry, I had my name up, but I fully, su <coughs> fully support what's been said by Derek, and uh, I would second that. Thank you, thank you, Brian. Good. Right, Jimmy. Yeah, I got a recommendation in front of Derek. I did, I thought I did. Okay, so you missed it. And yeah. Brian seconded, yeah. so yeah. basically, show hands, everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy to look like to click my next motion. And I would encourage you, if you haven't had a chance yet, to look at that short video um, that I circulated, because that there's people, there's councillors on there from other authorities talking.
book as well about cost of care. Yeah. Then you, John, haven't seen it, but you said That's right. <laughs> um, you know, the difference that it makes, so it, yeah. it's worth, and I'll, I'll circulate that when I circulate to more members. Yeah. As we well can take that back to our political yeah. parties as well. Yes, yeah, thank you. That would help anything that would encourage, because we don't want people missing out or not being able to participate, and these things into the future as well. Yeah. Thank you. Too many of us getting too old. Is there anybody else that likes to bring anything up before we close the meeting? No. No. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairman.